Welcome to the Badger Sweet 16 running back competition brought to you by Banging on the Drum. I am your host, T Dog, joined alongside with my co host, M Dog. And we have two special guests today one in Andy Keel from the Keel or the Delio with Keelio, and our newest guest on the show, Jordan. Jordan, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I got to work on my branding, apparently, though. <laughs> yeah, we we usually let people have one show and then then they get a nickname off, off their one show. So you'll have one by the end here. We'll see if we stamp you stamp you with it. So how you doing, Keel? I'm doing good, guys. Sweet, sweet. Mike, how you doing? Just dandy, just dandy. Can't complain about nothing yet today. So. All right, so we are going to lead into this one. So if you are a current listener, you're, it's going to be pretty familiar of how we did uh, the wrestling bracket challenge, but we're just condensing this into the 16 best Wisconsin running backs. And I want to say of all time, but it's more so of since we've been alive slash the closest ones to since we've been alive. So we definitely – are missing some of the older dudes. Uh, Keel, can you pull the guy's name that was like Crazy Legs something? Or Elroy that... Hirsch. Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch. Okay, so Mike got that one. But to lead this off, I'm going to have everyone go around and just say their biases and just kind of how they're going to be voting. If, if it comes up differently while you're voting, uh, who cares? But about how you think you're going to be voting going through. And then we're going to start with a little trivia. But first, I just want to hear how people are going to be voting. And I'll go first, just give an example. So I'm just going to be voting for who I would want on the team right now if I could have them. And I think I'm going to keep it as simple as that uh, to break it down. Um, but I'll kick it to Jordan. Jordan, do you know how you're going to be voting? when this one's coming through? Well, I think it's a, for me, it's a combination of a legacy for the program, but also, you know, most talented. I think it's some, some, um, you know, uh, formula of those two things. Um, plus my, you know, my own subjectivity of, if you take this guy and put him in this guy's situation, might he have been better or worse, so. So you, you got a complicated equation that you're going to be rolling through your head while this, this one's going through. I guess, I guess so. Yeah. yeah no, I just put it, put it on, on hard to just put it on one thing. Cause uh, I know as soon as I do that, I'm going to go back on it. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I like where you're coming from because, because some of these guys laid the foundation for the guys to come in the future and then like what the program became. So I like that a little bit of legacy in there. Kill. What, what are you thinking? I think uh, kind of like what Jordan talked about, just a legacy, what that person meant for the program. Um, but I'm huge on a like wow factor a little bit of just, um, you know, I think some guys have benefited from great like offensive line play and five yards cloud of dust type stuff. And then there's other guys who are just, unbelievable to watch and you could tell right away certain things that they were able to do so I'm probably a little bit all over the place too I like it I like it Mike do you got a formula no so if I if I have to try to like pinpoint what it is it'll probably be like just their most memorable games to me right so the things that stuck out in my mind there's going to be um, backs on this list here that nothing really sticks out in my mind from them, which will probably push them to like a, to the other guy for me. Yeah, no, I can see that. And we were talk. Our, I was talking with Jordan and Keel before the show um, a little bit and their recall is a hundred times better than me. So I'm excited oh, yeah. to, let, to let those guys go first and then trigger some of my memories. But we are going to start this off with the trivia and the trivia is going to be, I don't even know what the game's called, but basically we're going to use the top 20 rushers in Wisconsin Badgers history. 
and you have to keep getting a name of the rushers. If you have to pick a guy outside the top 20 or you can't think of anybody, you're out. So with that being said, we're going to start with our newest guest, Jordan. Then we're going to go to Keel. Then we're going to go to Mike. And I th- I'm going to let it snake back. And I have them up. So it would be cheating if if I was in here. But but let's start knocking these ones out. So top 20 all time. Jordan, what do you what do you got? Well, I'll take the one right off the top of the list. That'd be Ron Dane. Ron Dane's gone. What do you got, Keel? Uh, Jonathan Taylor. JT is gone. So those are the top two off the board. Mike, what do you got? I'll take Monty Ball. I don't think he's in the top three, but Mike. No, he is. Number three is off the board. Uh, Mike, again. So I'll take James White. James White. I just want to place him. He is number six. James White is off the board. Teal, what do you got? Uh, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, number four, off the board. Jordan? So I've got two, right? Yep, you get two. Uh, Anthony Davis and P.J. Hill. You guys are going right in order. So you got five and seven off the board. All right, Keel. Uh, Corey Clement. Number 12 off the board. Mike. Uh, John Clay. John Clay is number 11 off the board. And again, Mike. Oh, uh, oh, geez. Brent Moss. Brent Moss is number nine. Good poll, Mike. What do you got, Keel? Uh, Terrell Fletcher. Terrell Fletcher is 10 off the board. I keep writing stuff down. I don't know if this is going to come in handy. All right, Jordan, you got two. Now we're starting to get into it here. Yeah, uh, so yeah I'm in the weeds here. <laughs> 10 are off the board, so we only have 10 left. Just because I, I had to do a little research before this on our list, Larry Emery, pretty confident, will be on the list. All right, that's number 13, Larry is on the list, <clears throat> but now you have to go one more time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Braylon Allen's going to crack that list already. Oh, yeah. Yep. Braylon Allen is 15. All right, Keel. You guys are doing good. Um, I don't know. This I this Allen Amechi. Alan Amachi. So I think Keel is going to be the first one out of here. So Alan Amachi is not on the list, but I'm going to control F this before I'm the dumbass in this scenario. Alan Thompson, 1969 <laughs> to 1971. Were you pulling for that? No, he's just. That's my next one right there. <laughs> Oh, shit. He's off the <laughs> no, board. I'm just kidding. I'm All just right, kidding. Mike. Mike, what do you got? Uh, and I just, I guess I just assume this guy is a running back. Gary Ellerson? Gary Ellerson. No. But I, Jordan, I'm going to make you name one. Must not be a back. Before No, these, this, there's a quarterback that's in the top 20. I probably oh, could have given that, that, that oh, hint. That's a good, that's a good clue. Um, I can't think of who that would be though. Um, I would have never guessed it. But then when I went back and looked at some highlights, we were running the option a little bit. Oh, right? come on. You're well, getting to him now. <laughs> not well. I was going to try to guess the quarterback. Now I feel like it might be too easy. Um, is there, there's a, a Rufus. Jefferson, is that his name? That's a, that's an old running back. I think that's the name I might have gotten wrong. Rufus Ferguson. Ferguson. I is, uh, so Pastor. I think this this goes down as like the first tie in banging on the drum history. But Kiel, did you get the quarterback clue from? Was it Samuel? Bollinger. Yeah, it was oh, Bollinger. 
is number 20 on the list. So, so that's what we got. I'm calling it a tie. You guys are all kissing your sister today. So no one, no one pulled, but, but you guys did knock them out basically all in the order. You guys had the top 12 down. So better than I would have done for sure. But let's get into this bracket. I'm going to share my screen quick. So I'm going to have the stats up on the side. Uh, let me know if this is bugging you guys at all, um, how I'm going to have this, or if you want me to zoom in a little bit more or less in any aspect. I got to get this set up. So how does the screen look for you guys? Looks good. Name, name's too small. We got this. Perfect. All right. I think it's so okay. how I how I set it up is we have the power region, the before my time region, the balanced running region, and the speed region. So if you have any objections when these come up, feel free to shit on my bracket. That that is perfectly fine by me. But we are going to start out. And I think we're going to start out in the power region up in the northwest of the bracket. And the first matchup we have in this bracket is Ron Dane versus John Clay. So John Clay kind of drew a pretty shitty draw there. But Jordan, what do you got on these guys and who are you taking through to the next round? Well, you know, Dane's probably the no-brainer here. but. Um... Clay was uh, a super highly touted recruit. Keel is probably more of a recruiting guy than me, but he was a big time four star. I don't know if he cracked the five star, but USC, uh, which at the time they were the powerhouse. There were a lot of big schools after him. And I don't, I don't think he was a disappointment by any means. He was big 10 player of the year. Um, so he just, I think he, gets overshadowed a little bit because even an even better bat came along and took a spot, which we'll get to later. But um, Dane's the choice here for sure. Seems pretty easy, but Keel, where are you going with this one? Yeah, I I mean, I think it is Ron Dane. Um, like Jordan said, Clay, very touted recruit coming out of Wisconsin. Um, had some pretty good years with us, but uh, – I very few people on this list are going to beat Ron Dane. Um, and just he drew a really tough, tough person that first round. Mike, what do you got? So I th uh, I'm kind of under the impression that John Clay is like the quintessential power back. Um, I feel like in our in that I think it was the 2011 TCU game, if we would have just played him, I don't know, four series, we would have beat him by two touchdowns instead of only scoring two touchdowns. But um, Ron Dane has to be the guy. He kind of sets in motion the entire Wisconsin system and turns the program into what it is today. Yeah, just taking them to the next level. Uh, when we get into our next uh, area of the bracket, these are some of the shoulders Ron Dane uh, stood on, but we'll get there when we get there. But I'm going Ron Dane, clean sweep, uh, John Clay, drew the shit end of the stick. Um, maybe if this bracket was set up a little bit differently where we just went from the best running backs to like by yards or by touchdowns or whatever you, you want to do, he could have drew something better. Because I, I love watching John Clay run the ball. Um, but it doesn't help when you're a Wisconsin running back and you just got a bunch of people overshadowing. But anyways, we'll keep it with the power region. I'm going to start with Keel on this one. We have Braylon Allen versus P.J. Hill in the last matchup of the power region. Um, with this one, we got Braylon Allen, who's currently are on the team. Um, I think uh, there's probably going to be a little bit recency bias maybe with Braylon Allen and just how we view him. He does draw a couple of tough matchups here. Um, but ultimately, he's going up against P.J. Hill, which based off his production, he should be a really um, highly, you know, 
enjoyed player, but I never truly liked watching PJ Hill run the football. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Um, what was his nickname? Was it like Thunder Thighs or something like that? Well, didn't he have a nickname like that? Um, I just never really uh, thought with him in the backfield, we had uh, somebody that was talented and could carry us in certain ways. And I do think Braylon Allen prevents a little bit of different dynamic. Um, I've said this before, but I think Braylon Allen being number zero also just makes him more likable. Um, I'm not sure why, but I just really enjoy watching a number zero big power back at Wisconsin running the football. Um, so I'm going with Bra Braylon Allen. So were you a big Bradrick Shaw guy? Wasn't he a zero? He was number seven. Oh, shit. I like Bradrick Shaw. But anyways, we'll kick it. We'll kick it to Mike there. Uh, so I feel like I looked at this matchup a little bit earlier when Pat sent me the graphic and I felt like I was just going to push PJ Hill through. I don't know why there's nothing like that stands out in my mind about what he did. Um, I do think that the, like Braylon Allen being great is a recency bias for me, but when I, I mean, just like. I can't think of something great that Hill did, but I'm taking Hill here. Oh, so you are taking Hill over. Yeah. So, yeah. and I was going to say that was the one thing I did change on the bracket uh, since you've been gone. So it used to be, so when you initially got the bracket, it was uh, Braylon Allen versus John Clay. So that might be maybe why. that, maybe that's why I was thinking oh. that like, yeah. that's a good, real good possibility. Cause I think for sure I'd take John Clay over Braylon Allen, right? Because because of maybe that TCU game where he gets like one series at the beginning and one series at the end, and they dominate both those. Um, I think I'm I'll, I'll stick with my vote. I'm going to stick with PJ Hill. All right, Jordan, I'm going to kick it to you. I want to see some PJ Hill recall? Well, first I I just want to note that I 100% agree with Mike. If we run John Clay between the tackles 20 times in that TCU game, that was the game plan where we run away with that game. But um, so we're on the same page there. And I, you know, I think I would have taken Clay over both of these guys as well. But with the matchup, what it is, PJ Hill is perennially underrated because there was no wow factor. But I, I need to go with Braylon Allen here. Um, you know, two years in, he's got, if you look at the numbers, he's got a great head start on this all-time list. Um, more productive, definitely more wow factor. I think there's more potential at the next level as an NFL back. Um, just a more talented guy overall. So, so I would go with Braylon Allen, but P.J. Hill was, you know, Mr. Steady, you know, four yards in a cloud of dust. Um, running behind Joe Thomas does help. So, He's a good back, but I think if Braylon Allen gets gets PJ Hill's carries over the course of a career, you're going to want Braylon Allen's production. Yeah, and I I agree with that 100. percent And like I said, I'm going to be voting on who I would take on my team right now over each other, and it would definitely be Braylon Allen. And maybe that's just because the uh, what you call it, the potential to come still is there because him being as young as he is, I know we hear it on every freaking broadcast still to this day. Um, you got to think like, like what, what could he do once, once he comes of, I mean, I guess he probably already came of age early bloomer, but still, still that young, not good. So I'm going to take him. But we are going to roll into the before my time bracket. I don't know if you guys feel like this is before your time as well. So I'll make that clear. It was before my time. And when I come into this, I'm going to be strictly looking at the numbers here. And for our first matchup, we have Terrell Fletcher versus Carl. Someone say his last name for me. McCullough. McCullough. Carl McCullough. And when I look at this list, Harold Fletcher is number 10 in all-time rushing yards with 29 touchdowns. And Carl is 16 with only nine touchdowns. So I'm going with Terrell Fletcher. And that's all I got. And then I will kick it to Jordan to see what you got there. 
yeah, Fletcher's a choice. He had a really nice NFL career, too. Um, he was, I think he was a little more of a scat back, you know, third down back, catching passes. I think he did some kick and or punt returning for the Chargers in the NFL. So really talented guy. McCullough, good back, but, um, you know, lost carries to Dane at the tail end of his career, and rightfully so because Ron Dane is Ron Dane. So um, I'd go with Fletcher, too. All right, Andy, where are you going with this one? Um, full disclosure, I didn't remember who uh, Carl was prior to this, so I had to do some Googling. But I do think um, Terrell Fletcher is honestly one of my first backs that I remember at Wisconsin. I think a lot of people look at Dane to, like, talk about, like, stability of the program. But Terrell Fletcher and the other guy on this list, Brent Moss, were really two of the dynamic people that led us into our first Rose Bowl, our first successful seasons under Barry Alvarez. And I uh, just remember um, watching Terrell Fletcher those years, uh, just really number 41. I like the aesthetics of that number as a running back. Um, and he's one of my first Badgers I remember watching. So, All right. I like it, Mike. Where are you going? Even though yeah, it's so it's going to be it's going to be a clean sweep with Fletcher. Um, McCullough, I did not remember. Like, I don't remember. I vaguely remember both Fletcher and Moss, right? Yeah, no, I think Keel brought up some good points, and I think we'll be able to get into those further in the next round, but it's kind of the guys uh, that Ron Danes, or the shoulders that Ron Dane stood on there. But let's get into the next uh, matchup we got here, and we have Brent Moss versus Larry Emery. And Keel, I'll let you start this one. Um, I think the answer here is Brent Moss. Um, I think Larry is a little bit before all of our time, um, as we kind of talked about uh, with before our time. But Brent Moss was a huge back. He was very good. Um, and he did a lot of really good things as far as running the football. I think he's often kind of forgotten, I think, just because of some of the stuff he's gotten into off the field. Um, but recently has kind of been brought up. Um, I really think he was a dynamic runner and deserves to win this matchup. All right, Jordan, what do you got in this one? Yeah, Emery's the one that was not in my memory banks on, on this whole list. Good numbers, though. So, you know, it definitely deserves consideration. Uh, but Brent Moss is the choice, you know, Rose Bowl winning uh, running back. So, yeah, going with Moss. All right, Mike. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Moss as well. Uh, did not, like, Emery's before my time. I'm the oldest one here. So um, it's not that he's bad, but I think with this crew that we have, it has to be it has to be Moss. Yeah, but just to give Emery a little shout out here. So he had 2,979 yards, averaged 5.1 yards a carry, had 19 receiving touch. Wait. No, those are 19 rushing touchdowns. Okay, and then the, the last one, he's total touchdown. Okay, I thought it was 19 receiving touchdowns. I was like, damn, he was doing something right, catching the ball out of the backfield. But, yeah, he'd, but yeah, he'd have been, like, way before the curve. Yeah, damn, damn good back. Um, but I'm going to go with Moss as well, and I'm just letting the numbers speak there. So maybe we'll get into his numbers a little bit more when we get into the next matchup. Now we are going to go to the balanced running back area of the bracket. Have you guys had anything yet that you've seen? Because I was kind of worried about the balanced and the speed guys, but I guess we're getting into the balance in the speed guys, like a guy that you would have put somewhere else looking at this. Keel, you got anything? Uh, no, I am disappointed in a, a matchup coming up in the speed bracket that we can kind of talk about once we get there. But, I think as far as that goes, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think – so Jordan Taylor's our one seed in the speed, and I think he could have fell into the balanced area as well. But we'll start with what we do have for the balance. So we have Monty Ball versus Corey Clement, and I'm going to let Jordan start this one off again. Uh, Monty Ball, uh, I don't remember why this is in my brain, if I made it up or if an announcer said it, but – um, he's like a bowling ball on wheels, you know, um, 
and just a, an excellent combination of agility and power. Uh, the numbers are awesome. So um, it's ball, but Corey Clement, I, you know, he's another guy that, that I think gets overlooked and, and underrated. Um, phenomenal back. He started out behind both Gordon and White. And um, I just remember looking forward to the end of those games that year when Clement would get thrown in against the backup defense from the other team. And, um, you know, he would just run wild. It felt like he was running for 10 yards every time he touched the ball. So um, really good back in his own right. But Monty Ball's the guy. If you had to throw it into their NFL career, whose who's NFL career are you taking out of that one? Ball or Clement? You want the Super Bowl ring or you want a fairly average you get that money, though. I, I Yeah, I'd take Corey Clement for that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Clement hung around for a good six, seven years, right? He's still in the league, isn't he? I think he's still in the league. Okay. Yeah, which is impressive for a running back for one and then two, a guy that – like doesn't get a ton of like credit for being in the league, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's got that Super Bowl ring. I want to say he was a, a decent sized part of the Eagles Super Bowl victory that time too. But Mike, let's kick it to you. Who do you got out of these two guys? So uh I always got disappointed that we didn't like chase like really putting the touchdown record out of like out of hand with Monty Ball, right? So uh, when he was getting his touches, so was James. What I think James White had 10 touchdowns the year that Monty Ball broke the record. And I just felt like we could have really pushed that even further as a program to kind of recruit the next generation of running backs. So Monty Ball was always kind of my guy. I like Monty Ball. He was dominant. I thought he was going to be really great at the next level as well, but um, very good running back. Going to take Monty Ball here. I like Corey Clement too. Uh, I think he just kind of got lost in the years right after the dominance that we had at running back the previous four years. Yeah. And I'll go next here. And yeah, the touchdowns say it all. So Monty Ball is second all time uh, in in the NCAA with 77 rushing touchdowns behind a Navy guy. So someone that was scoring every single touchdown for Navy. But, yeah, I'm going to go with my ball on that one. Uh, Chiel, clean us up. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Monty Ball is definitely the answer. I think uh, he had kind of a disappointing start to his career, uh, but then really came on in a game at Iowa where it was, I think he was the third back at that point and really took over. And um, we were able to just ride him in the fourth quarter, but I'm really, I don't think Corey Clement would have ever beaten Monty ball, but he did get a sports hernia, I think his junior year or sophomore year, and he never really had the same explosiveness. I'd be really curious to see where he would have ended up on this list had that not kind of happened, but he was definitely uh, a fun back to watch. Corey Clement um, came over with Chris, was a Pittsburgh recruit, signed with us once Chris got the job here at Matt in Wisconsin um, and just kind of got injured. And he was in a stack backfield for the beginning parts of his career too. But yeah, definitely Monty Ball. Monty Ball rolls on with the clean sweep. So I'm going to start this next one out with you, Keel. We have Anthony Davis versus Michael Bennett. So Michael Bennett's actually one that kind of sent me down a rabbit hole today because I had remember he was the year, um, I believe, after Ron Dane. We didn't really know what to expect from the backfield. And I just remember him being um, incredibly fast. Uh, he had a really good year um, his senior year with like I think it was like 1600 yards rushing that I wrote down. Um, but I had Monty Ball like lower on my personal list, or uh, excuse me, Michael Bennett. And then as I was looking him up, I jumped him like four spots ahead of a bunch of guys. Um, but I think Anthony Davis is, I mean, he was a staple. He played uh, as a redshirt freshman. He played a lot of years. Um, I think he was a great talented back um, at Wisconsin. Um, fifth in, you know, career rushing uh, on the list, as you can see. Um, and I think he just takes it here, but I do, I did have a good time going down the Michael Bennett one year at Wisconsin rabbit hole. Yeah. He, he was going to be part of our, uh, jailbird part of the bracket. Cause what do we have? We have Michael Bennett 
And then who was the other guy that? Brent Moss, for sure. Larry Murray was arrested. But still, we could have had a whole a whole region that had been arrested before. Mike, before you got on, we were talking about Larry Emery's elusiveness because he not only was arrested, he escaped from jail as well. So, oh, geez, he should get he should have got through just for that. Yeah, yeah. ninety nine elusiveness rating on college football. <laughs> he was slippery. But anyway, let's reiterate who you went with Anthony Davis. I'm going with Anthony Davis. Yep. All right. So Jordan, what do you got on this matchup? This is. Uh, of all the matchups in this first round here, this is by far my favorite. I think you can make a really good case for either one of them. Um, Bennett is probably the most physically gifted back on this list. He was uh, an Olympic level sprinter. He, I think just by a hair, he missed qualifying for the hundred meters um, in the Olympics, just blazing speed. I forget what his 40 time was. It was right around four, three, if I, if I remember correctly. And, yeah, he was just in, waiting in the wings behind Dane um, and then got the one season as the featured back. And I'll tell you what, if, if you went down a rabbit hole, Keel, I hope you watch the YouTube clips because, man, that, that guy could fly. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a really good NFL career, too, before some personal issues, which we alluded to. So I'm, a, I'm a big Michael Bennett fan, but um, Anthony Davis, I, I have a real soft spot for him uh I, I think if he stays healthy because he had some injury problems too and mm-hmm. lost some carries later on in his career at wisconsin uh as a freshman back i think he's right up there with with dane and taylor for like early production in their careers i don't remember exactly what his freshman numbers were but but he looked awesome right out of the gates and by the time he got to the pros the injuries slowed him down a little bit I would, I would, I'm going to go with Anthony Davis in, in this matchup, but I, this is a really, really fun comparison here. Yeah. And to allude to some of the numbers, I pulled, pulled his freshman stats up here. So 291 attempts, 1,466 yards and 11 touchdowns in his freshman season. And so, yeah, I'm going to jump, jump in here real quick, Jordan. I don't know, or Mike, I, Pat, even, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but Anthony Davis is like the first back that I like, remember like watching and knowing kind of like what was going on with the game of football like the other guys it was great um watching you know parents cheer things like that but watching Anthony Davis was the first back that I felt like I was rooting for knew that he was good knew what he was doing um and kind of came come of age moment with him over those four years yeah no I'll I'll agree with you because even in the like before my time region so Jordan and I were talking about this how like I, I feel like I remember a lot of what Ron Dane was doing and the first game I ever went to Ron Dane was running all over uh, Illinois but I don't think if it wasn't for the legend of Ron Dane I would have remembered him that much I think going back and watching some of the highlights of Anthony Davis yeah kills right like that's that's the first guy that I remember being the guy and then I don't remember a year where Wisconsin had a bad running back really after that. But, but yeah, Anthony, Anthony Davis was definitely, definitely that dude. So I forgot where we were in that. So, so I think you just did your pick. Everybody else took Davis, correct? So three Davis votes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was the last one to pick here. No. So I did not pick, um, so I think that I would take Davis because I think these guys are essentially equal in my book. Um, Michael Bennett, very explosive. Anthony Davis, like he might be the guy that I remember, like just being good. And I want to say that part of his NFL career being short was the fact that he was like, had like a 4-0 in pre-med at Wisconsin or something like that. I remember like some stats being thrown out by uh the announcers that were like it Anthony Davis was incredibly intelligent right and so but my big knock on Michael Bennett is he got drafted by the Vikings nothing he can do about that but like that's a problem for me so I'll go with Davis as well him and Erasmus James they got that stink on him yep all right next 
we are moving to the speed region of the bracket. And this is where I'm going to guess where Keel has his little bit of beef in the uh, one versus four matchup in here. I'm just guessing, but I'm going to let uh, Keel explain it. So we have Jonathan Taylor versus Brian Calhoun in the one versus four matchup. What do you got, Keel? Yeah, so when I was doing my research like on these players and everything, um, I was very curious on how far Brian Calhoun was going to go. I didn't know how you were going to break the bracket up. I think the seeding and everything um, is just fine with how you did it with where he's at. But he played one season at Wisconsin, and he was uh, kind of an electric athlete. Um, he had a really great um, year receiving that, um, that year as well, and he was basically – um, one of the, the only offensive weapons we had. And if I remember correctly, the defense that we had that year was just horrendous. So we were constantly trying to use him to score points. And um, I think he just got the worst draw out of just about anybody besides maybe John Clay, uh, but going up against uh, Jonathan Taylor and just in the speed bracket alone. But he was one, he's one of my favorite backs that I've watched at Wisconsin. He was elusive. Um, he was more of a smaller guy. It was kind of the first like transfer guy that I ever kind of remember, um, paying attention to and like being like, Oh wait, you went to Colorado. He sat out a year trying to figure out what that meant, which is kind of hilarious to think about how college athletics works now. But, um, Brian Calhoun is up on my like personal list. Um, he was the fifth guy that I had written down as like my favorite, like who I thought was really good backs. Um, but just like looking at, his draw and at this list, I don't, with how you broke the bracket down, which is fine. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with him being a four seed, but I really enjoyed Brian Calhoun he had the visor. Like he just looked cool. Like, I don't know. He was one of my favorite backs to watch at Wisconsin. Yeah, no, it is a tough matchup. I yeah. assume you're going with Jonathan Taylor and, oh, yeah. <laughs> after the whole spiel, but yeah, I, I love Brian Calhoun. Like, I do like one of my my first memory of him was running all over Bowling Green. I think he ran over him for like 250 yards in his first game as a Badger. And I think if we could have put some of his Colorado stats in here, um, he would have stacked up a little bit better. Uh, but even with those, I, I don't know what Colorado was doing wrong, uh, not using him as much as they should have. Then I want to say he went to the NFL. Be this, this might be stupid. This might be a, like a rumor I hear, but I, I think he like either had a kid or he like just had to like take care of more shit than than someone that young should have to take care of, and was like, I'm gonna go to the NFL because we get money. And then if I'm recalling right, I think I might have just saw it here, but he was taken in the third round by Detroit, but. I think he he holds a special place in a lot of Wisconsin Badgers fans' hearts because I loved him too. So it wasn't it wasn't just Keel. So, uh, but yeah, he's getting put against Jonathan Taylor, who I think, yeah, yeah, I'm not even going to speculate what what's going to go on, but it, it's a tough matchup because Jonathan Taylor is one of the best running backs I've ever seen in college football ever. So. So, yeah, I'm going with Jonathan Taylor, but I do love me some Brian Calhoun. What do you got, Jordan? Yep, uh, I'm also going with Jonathan Taylor, but I uh, want to give Brian Calhoun his due. I was going to mention the Bowling Green game as well, and it's a really memorable game. I think that was a six-touchdown performance, uh, five or six touchdowns. I think it was six, though. And uh, great pass catcher out of the backfield. Uh, for whatever reason, I remember that season, uh, we didn't have cable or satellite or anything, but a lot of those non-conference games back then, the way to watch them was they'd replay them on PBS at like 10 p.m. <laughs> and so I remember staying up late uh, because you knew what happened in the game. And so my dad told me, oh, Brian Calhoun had this huge game. And so you stay up late and watch the game on PBS at, at 10 p.m. and staying up till like 1 a.m. to watch that replay. So um, I would have been like 13 years old then. So those are some cool memories. And I remember really enjoying that game in particular. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I was at, I feel like I was in Madison at a hotel lobby for some reason. But 
I, I think my memory's dog shit. I just put myself where I want to be when, when these games were happening. But I do recall seeing this game live, but I could be completely wrong about that. But Mike, uh, where are you going here? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor as well, but Calhoun, I feel like the way I thought about him was that if we had been able to keep him around for another year, and is it he was out – got drafted in 2006 I think so yeah. I think if he would have played 2006 I feel like we had a team that year that was just like not quite explosive enough to really like do some damage so I thought he would have been a game changer the following year as well for the Badgers and like we just missed on like that guy like really making things awesome in Wisconsin yeah yeah well Jonathan Taylor moves on I think Anybody that looks at this bracket would be like, yeah, Jonathan Taylor is moving on. But, yeah, Brian Calhoun definitely did something special in the one year he was at Wisconsin to to make him as memorable as he is. But we will move to our next matchup in the speed bracket. And we have Melvin Gordon, the two seed, versus James White, the three seed, and Jordan leadoff hit for us here. I'm choosing Gordon. These guys were teammates and, you know, it's pretty obvious uh, by Gordon's sophomore year when they were playing together that Gordon was the better, more explosive back. But White was great in his own right. A, a really good pass catcher, kind of similar to Calhoun in that sense. And a really memorable NFL career got robbed of a Super Bowl MVP uh, in, by Tom Brady in that game against the Falcons that just as easily could have been James White's award and maybe should have been. So great NFL career, uh, memorable Badger, really successful uh, teams during his his tenure as well. But uh, I would choose Melvin Gordon first. Bill, who you got here? Yeah, I think uh, Melvin Gordon um, is kind of a no-brainer here, um, but – I think he's moving on to a really exciting matchup in the next round, Melvin Gordon versus Jonathan Taylor. Um, but again, I, along with Jordan, I think James White is, was an amazing back at Wisconsin. I, you know, and the, there's Facebook memories that pop up and some of them make you cringe. Um, and one of them I have is when James White was a freshman, I said he was going to win the Heisman. He just really had a really solid freshman year um, was a great kind of a, one-two punch that year. Uh, I believe it was with John Clay. We beat Ohio State that year. James White had a big touchdown in the fourth quarter to give us the lead. Um, one of the more memorable guys. Um, you think of the game, it's like the Big Ten game against – or championship game against Nebraska where he ran and threw for passes. And I mean, he was a small guy, and it was nice to see him have a really – maybe one of the better NFL careers of any Wisconsin back. Um, but – Melvin Gordon is Melvin Gordon, so he wins. Yeah, no, Melvin Gordon was just electric. But, yeah, that whole backfield, Melvin Gordon, John Clay, and James White all being on the they, – they were all on the same team. I'm not crazy, right, for, for a period of time? One. Yep. Because I remember I was listening to the running backs coach. Like, I was doing some digging into the season beforehand, and uh, he, he talked about Melvin Gordon, John Clay – He's like, but this white boy, he's like, we got a white boy that can run on our team. And I was like, that seems like kind of, I, I don't know. It just sounded funny how he said it. And I was like, we got a white running back on, on the team. And then sure as shit, it ends up being James White, who is a killer on the, on the jet sweep for us. But yeah, uh, Melvin Gordon's tough to tangle with in the first round because when I was watching Melvin Gordon out Wisconsin, I was like, we're never going to get another running back as good as this guy. Like this, this is it. This is as good as it gets. And, and yeah, so Melvin Gordon is moving on for me. What do you got, Mike? Yeah. So uh, James White is the perfect change of pace back. Right. Um, I think that that's the role he played. For the Badgers, that's the role that he played for the Patriots. Um, just a guy that when you needed to catch out of the backfield or you needed to do something just slightly different, 
he was the guy you always turned to. Uh, Melvin Gordon, when it came to being like the guy, one of the best ones the Badgers have had, right? So we've we've turned the corner and had Jonathan Taylor since then. And then you also have like a guy like Ron Dane way back in the day, but Melvin Gordon's right there. Um, he spends four years at Wisconsin. You might be talking about him differently than we currently do instead of him just spending the three. Yeah. The eye test Melvin Gordon was definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to take Melvin Gordon. All right. So lots of clean, lots of clean sweeps there in the first round. I think the best matchup we had was maybe Anthony Davis, Michael Bennett, and then on the Braylon Allen, PJ Hill side of it. But let's get into the second round for the championship of the power backs. And we are going to go with Ron Dane versus Braylon Allen, the one versus the two seed. And let's start this one with Keel. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ron Dane here. Um, I still think Ron Dane's an obvious choice uh, against Braylon Allen. I think Braylon Allen with, you know, one year, if he has a second, you know, or comes back for his fourth year, that means something wrong, happened wrong this year. So I don't think he has a chance of getting anywhere close to the stats. Um, he'd have to put up some sort of, you know, Melvin Gordon-esque year. And even then, I still think Ron Dane, with what he meant to the program, what he's meant as the NCAA rushing leader, um, all those things, you got to go with Ron Dane. All right, Jordan, what do you got on this one? Yep, uh, two votes for Dane here. You know, Allen, his numbers through two years are super impressive. Um, he's, he's on a great trajectory. It'll be interesting to see how he fits in with, you know, what could be a very different type of offense, you know, for the rest of his career at Wisconsin. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but, you know, as, as far as, as team success and, and, and wow moments that kind of would put him on that top tier with some of the guys that we're talking about now, those are yet to come and they could happen, uh, but, but he's not on that level yet of, you know, Dane, Ball, Taylor, Gordon, even Moss. Um, he's got a little work to do. So. I like it. All right, Mike, what do you got? What do you got here? Um, I don't think that it needs explanation. Ron Dane is the guy here. Um, Braylon Allen Like Keel said, he's just not going to be there, right? So he's going to have one more year. There's, I don't know, what, what do you have to have, like 4,000 yards to like even kind of push on his yardage? Something like yeah. that. What has he got, 2,500? 4,500 so like, some yards this season. Yeah. Oh, he touched yeah. it. He could yeah, have to even like, touched. yeah. Yeah, he could. Um, if he is even like mildly successful, I would imagine that he doesn't. Right. So um, I think he's a great back. I just don't think that he's going to measure up to what Ron Dane did or what Ron Dane meant to this program. Yeah. And looking at watching old Ron Dane highlights, it looks like Jim Brown esque in the NCAA. It was just a man amongst boys. And yeah, that's, that's tough to beat. And Braylon Allen still got some time left, but yeah, Ron Dane is, is the easy pick there for sure. So now we are going to go to the before my time bracket and we have Terrell Fletcher versus Brent Moss. And I'm going to let Jordan lead this one off. So uh, Fletcher is great back, way better pro career. We talked about some of the reasons why, but uh you know, Barry Alvarez would have chosen Brent Moss. And, and I, I forget exactly what the quote was from Alvarez, but um, of any Badger back he coached, which he included Dane in, in this comment, if he needed one yard, he said, Brent Moss is my guy. So I'll defer to Barry Alvarez on, on this choice. Uh, and real close, but I will say Brent Moss. All right. I don't know anything about this matchup, but I'm going to be the devil's advocate just when it comes to yards per carry. But I want to know, like, I mean, obviously we're Wisconsin football, but these guys both played from 91 to 94. 
and they both had 3,400 yards apiece. Uh, Fletcher had 29 touchdowns. Moss had 34 touchdowns. But I'm going to give Fletcher the slight edge because he gets 5.6 yards per carry. So he gets a he gets a first down on every two carries where Brent Moss has 4.9 yards a carry. Other than what you just said, almost just flipped me with the, the Barry Alvarez one yard guy. But just to make it a little bit interesting, I'm going to go with Terrell Fletcher in this one. And like I said, I don't know shit about this one. So, Keel, what do you got? Um, I think it from like the, the before my time, we talked about how Terrell Fletcher was kind of the first guy I remember um, seeing, you know, run the football, be a star at Wisconsin. Um, but my dad and I have actually had this conversation and my dad, I was locked in during that Rose Bowl season and he chose, chose Brent Moss. And um, he did say the same thing that Jordan brought up about Barry's quote about if he needed a yard, he was going to get him. Um, so I will also go with Brent Moss. All right, Mike, you got to you got to clean it up. Do it. For yeah. Us. So the, um, so I'm going to I'm going to make an argument for Brent Moss here quick with this one yard thing where Pat ripped on him for only rushing for four point nine yards <laughs> per carry. But um, maybe like he just got more touches when they needed one yard. So that pulls his average down a bit. Right. So when Barry Alvarez needs a yard, he's handing it to Brent Moss and he gets three that pulls his average down. So, uh, but I am actually going to go with uh, Fletcher because for me, name recognition is higher there, right? So I remember both of them. I remember like little things about them, not a lot, right? So I'm pretty young guy when these guys are on the team, but I do remember like both of them had highlights during some season. Don't even know which one it was, right? Have no clue. Um, that I would see because I watched a boatload of ESPN during that time. But um, Fletcher definitely has a name recognition for me over Moss. And so I'm going to go there and I'm going to uh, send it over to Pat to really make the deciding factor here. And I don't know if we explained how we do deciding factors for um, when we run into a tie on this. But we're going to use a coin flip app and we're going to go three in a row. Uh, Jordan, is Moss heads or tails? Uh, Moss, let's go with heads. All right, Moss is heads. First one is tails. This, this app isn't as fun as the other one that I had. All right, so <laughs> we, we got one, one Fletcher. Oh, now we got Ooh. one. Moss. So for all the Marvel, <laughs> oh, and Moss moves through to the next round. I'm actually very happy about that because I, you guys definitely, Jordan definitely sold me on Moss. I thought everybody was going to go with, with Moss. So I thought I was just going to be the asshole uh, bringing up the other side, but Moss moves on to the next round to run into Dane. And that was another reason why. I didn't give a shit who I picked because his his next matchup is going to be tough. But let's get to the balanced running backs, um, and we got a good matchup here. So we have Monty Ball versus Anthony Davis. And, Mike, I'm going to let you start one here. All right, so I think I'm going to go with Monty Ball here. I love both these backs. Um, when Monty Ball was at Wisconsin, the whole team was just rolling. They were – a team I thought like legitimately could compete for a national title at least a couple of those years. And he was a big, big piece of that. So I'm going to stick with Monty Ball here. All right, Kill, what do you got? Uh, the battle of 28s. Um, I'm going to go with Monty Ball as well. Um, I do think uh, Anthony Davis was good and he had a talented backfield we played three backs with around Anthony Davis just like we did with Monty Ball but if you look at the backfield that Monty Ball was able to put up the numbers that he did with sharing carries whether that was with John Clay or James White um, and Melvin Gordon I just think that even elevates Monty Ball um, a little bit just having to battle with those guys for carries those guys were well deserving 
good pros. Um, and he was the leader of that backfield. And it wasn't even really a question um, that he was the number one guy when he was there with those two guys. So, All right, Jordan, I'll let you decide or keep this battle alive. Ultimately, I'm, I'm going to go with Monty Ball, but it, a part of me does wonder if if you took Anthony Davis and, and set him in the offense that Ball got to play in, uh, the back-to-back years with, with Tolzien and then with Russell Wilson, it, I do wonder what Davis's numbers might have looked like, and, and maybe they could have even matched Ball's. But, um, you know, it's hard to argue with, with what Ball did uh, when, when you look at the yards, the touchdowns, and, you know, the highlights of, of the team success during that stretch, too. So, so it's Monty Ball. Yeah, and Monty Ball moves on through, and yeah, 83 total touchdowns. So, think Ron Dane's the next guy in line if we're just looking at this and he's got 12 more touchdowns than Ron Dane so yeah my my ball will get through just purely on numbers and like you guys all iterated was the team was just just clicking at that time so next matchup we got here Jordan I'm gonna let you lead off hit this one we have Jonathan Taylor versus Melvin Gordon and what do you got I'm guessing we've all been looking at this matchup. Like we all, we all knew this, these, that these two are going to butt heads once uh, you saw how the bracket was put together. And so on one side, Taylor's numbers are just astronomical when you look at what he did in, in just the, the three seasons. And if he would have come back for that fourth season, he blows Dane's uh, record out of the water. Um, not even, not even close. On the other hand, you have Melvin Gordon, who uh, probably the greatest single season by a Badger running back. I know he didn't win the Heisman, and Ron Dane did, but if you if you compare the numbers from those two years, Gordon Gordon's is is more impressive. Um, and he'll talk about the wow factor. To me, Gordon is like the ultimate wow factor Badger running back, and. I, I, I'm going to go with Melvin Gordon here. And this is good. This is one of them where it's going to run contrary to how I might justify some of my other choices because Jonathan Taylor's production is, is, is better than, than Gordon's over the course of a career. They both played the same number of seasons, but Gordon's peak and, and some of the runs and moments and games, individual games, um, this is this is probably my most off the wall pick so far. Maybe I'm wrong about other people's choice here, but I, I'm going to pick Melvin Gordon. All right, Mike, I'm going to kick it to you on that. Yeah, one. so so this is a battle of like guys that I really really enjoyed watching play football. Um, I do think that like Melvin Gordon for sure is a flashier back. Um, It would have been interesting to have him be the main piece his freshman year, right? To be the guy that gets the ball 15 to 20 times instead of three. Um, Where Jonathan Taylor was probably getting 25 touches his freshman year. Um, Yeah, this one's a really tough one. I think I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor here think that just his overall production I got to give it to him I love Melvin Gordon's like career at Wisconsin I love what he's done since he left Wisconsin I think that he's had a really plus NFL career even though the last couple he's yet he's had to bounce around a little bit um but as far as overall production goes I think I got to go with Jonathan Taylor and we mentioned the Heisman like I don't think you can put the Heisman like trophy in any of this because to win a Heisman as a running back from a team that doesn't win a national championship, I think is almost impossible in today's football game. Um, Like Monty Ball finished after another running back the year that he broke the touchdown record for a single season, which doesn't make any sense at all. You know, so like they're, 
the way they vote is determined partially at the very least by um by like your popularity or like what you should be doing or like yeah how your team is doing instead of just the production of the player so i think like moving forward i won't hold that against a guy if the if he didn't get that right because they're going to give it to a quarterback almost a hundred percent of the time yeah i guess though but that kind of does speak to like ron james but but whatever this is definitely the toughest matchup that we came to i'm, I'm gonna go here quick because I think I'm going to do a little zag on myself as well. And like I said, when I seen Melvin Gordon running the ball, I was like, Wisconsin's never going to have a running back this good again. Like, I really did not think we were going to be seeing someone as electric as that coming in. And then Jonathan Taylor comes, and he's just as good, if not better. I think it's very even, and I think – some of the stuff that Melvin Gordon did in his career where 2,587 yards in a season, second to only Barry Sanders, a uh, single game. He had, he held the rushing record for what was it like a day when it was like a week. Yeah. It was yeah. almost so, nothing. So in a, in a single game. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Melvin Gordon as well. I love Melvin Gordon and I'm going to let, Keel, clean it up and see if we need to go to the coin that I already exited out of for some dumb reason. Uh, um, this I was like dreading this matchup after like as soon as Mike I agreed to come on I knew eventually at some point I was going to have to pick between uh, these two guys, um, Jonathan Taylor. Um, I remember watching him as a freshman and just. You know, comes in as a recruit, flipped him from Rutgers. We didn't really have many options at running back. And then for him to get the start, you're kind of curious on what he's going to look like. Red shirt freshman, not really sure. And you're just watching him. Um, and you, I just remember talking about how he's just going to be a good back. Like, he just has the vision. He has the jump cuts. He has the speed. Um, he looked like he had the total package. Uh, and then there's Mel Melvin Gordon, um, who – even when he ran between the tackles just always seemed to kind of make it a jet sweep where he would hit the sideline and just have these long strides. And I've been killing myself over this, but I'm also going with Melvin Gord. I can't believe we had three people. I thought I was going to be on an Island, just like Jordan was talking about. Um, but just watching Melvin Gordon run the football uh, was a wow factor. And I talked about the wow factor, Jonathan Taylor, probably the second on that list. Um, Michael Bennett is a little bit too before my time to, and only had the one season. But if you look at the yards per carry that are up on the screen, Melvin Gordon has over a yard average per carry better than anybody else on that list. And it's not like he has no carries. And, you know, you think like, oh, if he gets 300 more carries, does he still have the same average? And I think he does, which is crazy. So I think that's where I kind of uh, lean to, I think he was the most uh, fun offensive player that the Badgers have ever had. Um, even when he wasn't the main back, he knew when he touched the ball, it was going to be special. Um, and he just, he's insane um, as, as a running back in college. And um, I think he had a really good NFL career fumbles, which were a problem in college too. Um, kind of showed up in the NFL, but he'd fumble in college and then he would, run for 65 yards on the next play and score a touchdown. Um, it's Melvin Gordon. I can't believe we went three for Melvin on that one. Kind of shot. Yeah. No, so I, what is, what is his attempts versus like the top four guys there? So he's got like 300 less attempts than the yeah. other top five rushing totals. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So Jonathan Taylor, nine twenty six. Melvin Gordon, six, 31 and it's about a thousand yard difference between between the two yeah 1200 yards yeah, yeah no that that one surprised me too because Jonathan Taylor was so good but I think that's the toughest matchup and in the way I set up the bracket definitely could be a 
final four matchup for sure. Probably should have been a final four matchup between those two, but that is not the way we set it up. We are going to go to the winner of the power region versus the winner of the before my time region. We have Ron Dane versus Brent Moss. And I'm going to be boring here, so I'll go first. And I like the insight that Jordan and Keel has given me on Brent Moss today. Like, I did try to look up highlight videos, but I think it's before people were uh, clipping highlights like they are now, um, just to see what he was doing. And it's cool to hear, like, the shoulders he stood on in uh, Brent Moss and then um, Terrell Fletcher. I did not realize we had two really good backs like that right before Dane, but it's Ron Dane. I'm going Ron Dane, and it seems too easy. But, Jordan, what do you got? I'll keep it quick, too. Uh, Ron Dane, like you said, uh, Standing on shoulders is a good description because um, Moss and, and Fletcher were a big part of building up not only the program, but the style that, that Dane um, then, then furthered and, and led to back-to-back -back Rose Bowls, um, which I think if, if you look throughout history, you see how truly exceptional that accomplishment is, along with the, along with the Heisman, along with the yardage record, which he still should have, which we can maybe get into in a bit, but um, I'm choosing Ron Dane. All right, Keel, what do you got there? Um, I have Ron Dane too. Mike? Yeah, so I think this one's, I mean, for me, it's simple. And mostly because I'm just too young to remember what Moss was. And he's, I mean, looking back at the lore of what Wisconsin is, he's just not what Ron Dane is. All right, Ron Dane moves one step closer to getting that BJ, and he is in the championship game. Um, so then we are going to do the winner of the balanced running back bracket versus the winner of the speed running back bracket. And we have Monty Ball versus Melvin Gordon. And Mike, go first on this one. Uh so I think that Melvin Gordon gets the the uh, nod here. And it's probably because when they were played on the same team, I was rooting for Melvin Gordon to get the ball because that's what I wanted to see. So, so Monty Ball was the guy that you just gave it to him 25 times, but the three times you were giving it to Melvin Gordon during those games, like he was just explosive and changed – what was going on in those games. So I'm going to take Melvin Gordon here, I think. All right, Kiel, what do you got? I'm with Mike taking Melvin Gordon again. Um, I think it's kind of like a highlight film versus just production film. I think that kind of just like what Mike said, anytime Melvin touched the ball, you didn't know if he was going to go 70 yards. Monty Ball is phenomenal, deserves a lot of credit for what he did in college. Um, but you saw once Melvin, um, in the backfield without Monty Ball or without James White, what do he do? He rushed for 2,500 yards and uh, seven yards of carry. So I just think it's Melvin Gordon. Jordan? Uh, one thought on Monty Ball. So we talked about his incredible record-setting season with this dynamic offense. I think people appreciate enough that last season when, you know, Gordon and White were kind of nipping at his heels for, for carries, but our offense was really unsettled that season. The coordinator, the quarterback, the offensive line, it did not look good that season. And that dude, you know, tons of carries, grinding out yards, those were not easy carries or easy yards uh, for most of that last year. But, you know, um, he, he deserves a lot of credit for um, what, he, what he brought to the program during a really challenging year. That being said, for all the reasons you guys mentioned, Melvin Gordon. All right. Melvin Gordon moves on. Yeah, it, it was kind of the battle between the Badgers that we have for uh, touchdowns and, and then for yards. So Melvin Gordon is the single season rushing leader for the Badgers. 
Badgers and Monty Ball is a single season touchdown record holder for the Badgers. But yeah, I, I would have won with Melvin Gordon as well. I love Melvin Gordon. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that very easily could have been a Melvin Gordon versus Jonathan Taylor match up there to go to the championship. And that would have been interesting as well. But I'm going with Melvin Gordon and that sets up our championship where I'm going to lead with Mike in this one. We have Ron Dane versus Melvin Gordon. And so I think that I'm going to be quick and just say that the lore falls with Ron Dane and that's where I'm going to vote is with that. Okay. Yep. We'll, we'll get more into it. All right, Jordan, you go for it. So if we're talking greatest Badger running back, you know, to me, that's, I meant you talked about, asked about biases earlier. It's about legacy. It's about greatness, accomplishments, the combination of the records, the Heisman, the Rose Bowls, setting the standard, all those things together. Um, I have to choose Ron Dane. Uh, if you were asking me who, who do I, uh, you know, want with the ball in space to make a play, I guess I would choose Melvin Gordon, but when, when you look at all of the totality of it, Ron Dane is the greatest badger. Running back. I like it. Keel, you're going to decide it for us um, or, or not, or keep it going. Yeah. So I think um, when people think about Ron Dane, it's all the stuff that Mike and Jordan talked about and um, just longevity, what he meant, what he did for us as a program. Um, back to back Rose Bowls, running over people, um, carried us in probably the one of the best stretches we've ever had as a program. Um, that being said, uh, he would have finished third on my list. I have Melvin Gordon winning this. Um, I just think it's a combination of just that uh, Melvin Gordon has the aura for me, um, just watching him run around all the big plays that he had, the big seasons when it was finally him. Um, I just think, and then on top of it, if I were choosing who I wanted on my college football team right now, I would pick Melvin Gordon. So I went with Melvin Gordon as number one. Dang it. I did not want to decide this one, but I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping Keel was going to do it for me. Um, and like I said, I love Melvin Gordon. I love Jordan Taylor. I picked Melvin Gordon over Jordan Taylor. Shit. I think Honestly, even with that, Ron Dane, Jonathan Taylor. Um, and I said my voting was going to be who I would want on my team right now. Who, who do I think this team would be better with right now? But I, I think I am going to go back on that word uh, <laughs> because I just think what Ron Dane built, it's – I we we've had this argument on our show before, like where it's like, oh, this guy, like an NBA player today would go back to the 60s and just dominate this. And I, I don't think we quite have that stretch in this, but I think there's a little bit of that. And just with the way Ron Dane looked against the players he was playing against at the time he was playing, I just think he's better. I think he was better at in his time. And I'm gonna go with Ron Dane because that's that's what this program kind of was built on. This what the Badgers are today because of that guy. And Ron Dane is gonna get the BJ. And I had decided I did not want to do that. So yes, thank you guys so much for coming on, but I do want to hear. If you guys got anything to close with, we'll we'll start with Jordan. What do you got on on the whole bracket? Um, so this is one of those topics that my brain has probably played through like a hundred, at least a hundred times. Just uh, you know, and sitting and waiting for whatever, and your brain wanders. And for some reason, my my brain has gone through this list a lot as a Badger football fan. So it was cool going through the matchups, talking about the different different great running backs and I'm guessing at different points I've had Taylor Gordon or Dane at the top of that list in my brain just kind of depending on uh what my 
my priorities or my thought process was, but um, yeah, Dane's just too, uh, the totality of his accomplishments are too uh, impressive to, to ignore. So I think we got the right guy at the top. Theo, what do you got? Um, I'll just like Dane finished third on my list because Melvin Gordon and Jonathan Taylor only played for three seasons at Wisconsin. Dane finished out his career. It was a little bit different time. Um, I do think um, the winning that Ron Dane was able to accomplish in his last two years, I think is probably why um, he's elevated in a lot of people's minds. But I think both Jonathan Taylor and Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon, my number one, Jonathan Taylor, number two, um, would give Melvin Gordon may have caught him, you know, if he has even uh, remotely uh, the season he did as a junior and Jonathan Taylor would have clearly caught him um, unless injuries or something happened, which we're never going to assume in a bracket like this. But so I think just with that um, kind of drops Ron Dane down. Um, I wonder if some of it's maybe recency bias, you know, I was uh, 12 or, or 10 years old when Ron Dane was running around. Um, not as locked into Badger football as I was when I, you know, was in college or in my late twenties watching Melvin Gordon and Jonathan Taylor run. So um, I do think if you add a, a fourth season on either Melvin Gordon or Jonathan Taylor's career, and hopefully a good season means winning. Um, I'm curious uh, where people would fall with that. Mike, what do you got? Um, like I said, I think the lore is what puts Ron Dane there, whether that's historically accurate or not. Um, that is kind of the, it's been the basis of what the program is for 30 years, 20 years, I guess. Um, and so that's probably why I nod that way. I do think that probably most of the guys that are probably 2010 and later are all going to be better running backs than what Ron Dane was in the mid nineties, right? If you take them and their skill set back to the mid nineties, I think that they dominate that game. That's what I believe most sports are, is that you build on top of the skills that you see previously, right? So um, the best wide receiver in the NFL is Jerry Rice, right? He's got all the stats and everything like that. Well, as soon as he started doing crazy stuff, then the next guy does crazy stuff. And when Moss is catching the ball over top of everybody's head, while he's one of the greatest that have ever done it, the next 15 wide receivers have all at the very least attempted to do that and tried to do it. So they've honed that skill the same way Moss did and move forward. Um, so I think Badger running backs fall into that same category is that they see what Ron Dane and uh, – Michael Bennett and Anthony Davis and all these guys have all done and they step on their shoulders and they move the program forward. And so are they better overall backs? Yeah. But do they have the historical significance that Ron Dane does? I don't think so. So I'm going to give it to, that's why I think Ron Dane's the right pick here. Yeah. And I guess my takeaway from it, it was actually harder than I thought. I thought it was going to be an easy March for Ron Dane and Jonathan Taylor to meet up in this matchup, but I guess to not, not like defute your point, Mike, but like something that I think is interesting is the guys who played earlier that I think could still play and have success today. And I think that's like the Ron Danes, the Jim Browns, like those guys, you put them on the field today, they're still fucking beasts in, in today's game. And I, and legacy. So I ended up, falling back to legacy when I told myself I wasn't. So yeah, I could have went a lot of different ways, with this. but thank you guys so much for coming on your guys. The insight and recall is definitely better than ours. Yeah. And it was, it was nice to have. So thank you, you guys, guys for so sure much. made the draft. Thanks guys. Like you guys. Us. Yep. All right, we will close out of here. And thank you all for listening. Please like, subscribe, download, and keep on listening. Thank you.